Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's recipe is one that has been requested a number of times and I thought I would share this just in preparation for the festival time. Today we are making modak. This is a traditional Indian sweet that we make around the time of Ganesh Chaturthi. Ganesh or Ganpati is the Lord of Wisdom, also colloquially known as the Elephant God. This treat is considered to be his favourite and that's why we make it for Jaturthi, which is considered to be his birthday. Whenever you make modak, you also have to make something called a garanji. I'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. When making these, it's traditional to only serve them in denominations of ones, so 11, 21, so on and so forth. Today I'll be sharing two versions of my modak recipe, one using a traditional jaggery filling and the other using dates, which kind of forms a sugar-free version. So let's get started. For the traditional filling, we're going to need 100 grams of freshly grated coconut. You can buy this frozen or go ahead and buy fresh coconut from the supermarket and scrape it out of the coconut. 70 grams of jaggery, which I've crumbled up. An eighth teaspoon of cardamom powder. For the sugar-free version, you're going to need 60 grams of freshly grated coconut and 60 grams of fresh medjool dates, de-seeded and chopped finely. An eighth teaspoon of cardamom powder. Now for the dough. You're going to need 150 milliliters of boiling water, 150 grams of sifted fine rice flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and three quarters of a teaspoon of ghee or butter. Alongside these ingredients, you're also going to need a quarter cup of water, this can be at room temperature, one tablespoon of ghee, and some extra for greasing the plate, two banana or canna lily leaves, or baking paper, this will be used in the steamer, and you're also going to need a bamboo or stainless steel steamer. So let's get to making our modak. We're gonna start first with the traditional filling. In a heavy bottomed pan, non-stick pan or kadhai like I have in the video, Heat the jaggery and coconut together. Make sure you're continuously stirring the ingredients with a wooden spoon over a low heat. This is really important to make sure we don't get any burning. Continue to cook the jaggery and coconut mixture until the coconut has lost all of its moisture. You can see in the video that as the jaggery melts, the coconut starts to release more oil and some of its water, and it becomes quite a wet mixture. We need this to dry up a little bit more. Make sure you continue to mix the ingredients in the pan to prevent any side from burning. This is what the mixture should look like once the coconut moisture has completely evaporated. The mixture should be nice and sticky and clumped together as you mix it. Now's the time to add in the cardamom powder. We do this right at the end so that we can retain that fresh zingy flavor of the cardamom. Once you've added the cardamom, mix everything together and remove the pot from the heat. Set the filling aside to cool before we use it later. In the same kadhai, heavy bottomed pan or non-stick pan, heat the dates and coconut together. Again, stirring continuously. Remember to keep everything moving to prevent any burning. Use your wooden spoon to squash the dates as they cook and soften down so that you can get a really smooth texture. Once again, remember that if the coconut starts to burn, remove the pan from the heat completely and remove the filling from the pan. This will make sure that it doesn't cook any further. You can see that this filling is a lot drier and it takes a bit more time for the coconut to release the oils and the moisture. Once the dates have softened down completely and everything has come together in a smooth mixture, add in the cardamom powder and mix through well. Now you can remove the pan from the heat and set the mixture aside to cool. Now let's get started on our dough. In a small pot, Heat up the water. It's really important to have boiling water, so even if it was boiled before, it's probably cooled down a little bit now. Once you start seeing the bubbles form, add in the salt and the ghee. Once the ghee has melted and the water is boiling, turn off the stove. Before adding the flour, we need to create some turbulence in the water. Now, slowly add in the rice flour. You should start to see this really clumpy mixture come together. That's okay, use your wooden spoon or fork to mix it through really well. It will be a tough mixture, be patient with it, it'll all come together. Now we don't want to leave the dough out like this for too long, we actually want to let it steam. Pop a lid over it to steam for roughly five to 10 minutes. 
five minutes are up and now we can get to kneading the dough. I like using the dough hook attachment to my stand mixer. I find I get a really smooth dough. If you don't have one of these, you can of course knead the mixture by hand. It'll just need a little bit more time. You have to work really fast with this dough because we do want it to stay quite warm. Cold dough becomes a lot harder to work and much harder to remove any clumps. If you're using the dough hook attachment with the stand mixer, set the speed to its lowest and let the dough hook work its magic. You can see the steam coming out of the dough, that's good, we don't want it to cool down completely, we want to be working with hot dough. You'll see it start to come together into a few clumps. Now we can increase the speed to the second lowest setting. This will ensure that we get a really smooth dough. All in all, you only need roughly two to three minutes using the stand mixer. The dough should look exactly like this. It's a little bit spongy and really soft to touch. Before filling our Mordex, let's prep our steamer. You can use banana leaves, canna lily leaves, or baking paper to line your steamer bottom. If you're using any of the leaves, be sure to grease them with some key or vegetable oil before using them. Now let's say hi to mum. She's helping me out today to show you guys how to fill your Mordex. Prep your palms by using some key and water. This will ensure that the dough stays moist in your palms. Take a two teaspoon size piece of dough and roll it into a ball in your palms. Once the dough is smooth, use your thumb or your knuckle to create a small imprint. Use this as your guide to create a little bowl by pressing together the sides of the dough. Be gentle here, rice flour can be quite dry. Use some key and water if you find that it's breaking apart. It's okay to use this method to mend the dough as well. Once you've created a nice bowl like so, add in a teaspoon worth of the filling to the center and push this down. Now, gently crease the rice flour dough into small creases. I like to use my thumb, my index finger and middle finger to help as a guide. Once you've created the creases all the way around, gently turn the modak in your palm and use your fingers to bring together all the dough into a peak. If it starts to break, you can use a little bit of the water and the key to help mend those gaps. Once you've brought all the dough into a peak, create a little point and that's your modak ready to go. Set this aside on the plate and get through the rest of your dough. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that whenever you make modak, you have to serve it alongside one karanji. To make the karanji, all you need to do is roll out a two teaspoon size dough ball into a large circle. Now fill half of the circle wrapper so that you create a half moon shape and fold over the rest of the dough and pinch together the sides. It's so easy. Honestly, I don't understand why we don't make 11 karanjis and just the one modak. I don't know who decided to make it so complicated. You can also see that I've been snacking away at the filling while recording this video. Now that the modaks are filled, let's set up our steaming apparatus. Prepare your base pot per the instructions of your steamer. Every pot is different and so the amount of water will also differ. Make sure you have enough water so that the pot doesn't run dry. We'll be using this for about 20 minutes in total, so use your best judgment and fill the water. Once the water in the base pot is boiling, add on the steamer on top. I'm using a stainless steel steamer and it has two steamer compartments which I can layer up. Depending on your apparatus, you may need to do this whole process twice. Let the modak steam for roughly 15 minutes. Keep an eye on them, make sure the water has not run dry in the base pot and make sure that they're cooking through really well. And now you have freshly steamed modak. Because these are best served fresh from the steamer, piping hot, there's a bit of a trick to remove these. Grab a bowl of ice water and keep it on the side. Dunk your hand into the ice water and grab a modak really, really quickly and pop it onto a pre-greased plate. By using a spatula or tongs or even a fork, you're going to ruin that beautiful, soft, plush rice flour texture. 
Before serving, make sure you do add a little drop of ghee right on the tip of your mozok. And that's it. That is how you make traditional and sugar-free mozok. I love this recipe so much and I'm so glad mum and I spent two hours writing out the recipe from her book, which was written in Marathi, the language I speak at home. If you've got any questions about today's video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure I get back to them as soon as possible. It was really important for me to upload this video just before Ganesh Chaturthi, so I'm so glad I got it out to you all. I will also be announcing super soon my special sweets masterclass to walk you through some of my favorite classic Indian sweets. That's it for today. Hope to see you guys next week.